effective immediately, I am banning Mr. Sterling for life from any association with the Clippers organization or the NBA. On Tuesday, Donald Sterling, the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers, was banned for life by the NBA for his racist remarks. To discuss the fallout, Stephen Brunt joins us for the last word from our Sportsnet studios in Toronto. Now, Stephen, what's your reaction to Sterling's comments and the NBA's stand on all this? Well, it's, uh, it's an extraordinary moment. Uh, I don't think we've seen the equivalent of this in any other sport. We have seen owners banned before for different things. We have seen players banned for life, for drug use, uh, for gambling. But the, having an owner thrown out of a league because of something he said in a private conversation, a recorded conversation, uh, is unprecedented. But I think there's a lot of things about Donald Sterling and about the NBA that made this inevitable and necessary in terms of what Adam, Adam Silver did. I mean, it seemed many others uh, had known Sterling was a racist for a long time. How come it took the NBA so long to catch on? Well, I think that they knew, and I think everybody knew to a degree, it's public. He was involved in a housing discrimination lawsuit some years ago where there were depositions. Uh, it was written about. You know, Donald Sterling's record, actually, that stuff is far more damning in a lot of ways than what he said in the conversation. But it didn't hit that hot button, push the hot button, the way those hearing his voice on TMZ did, not just for fans or for sponsors or for anybody else or the own, other owners in the league, but most importantly for the players in the NBA. This registered very directly with players, and it's that dynamic, that volatile dynamic in a lot of ways, a, a, a league which is dominated by African-American players, 80% of the players in the league are African-American, the perception of white ownership, a white commissioner, that has always been fraught, that relationship, and this really brought it to a head. Uh, speaking of the commissioner, how do you think the new NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, handled the situation? I think he handled it well, but I also think, Wilder, he did the only thing he could do because he was facing uh, a player insurrection. Players were going to, we now know, yeah. we now know with beyond a, a doubt that the players were going to not play. This was a revolution. So the only thing that Adam Silver could do was take everything in his powers as commissioner, use, throw the book at, at Sterling as completely as he could, the highest fine he could levy, the lifetime ban, and the threat at least to force him to sell the team. Uh, because had he not done that, his players would have sat down and said, we're not playing in this league anymore. Uh, looking ahead now, it's expected that the other league owners will force Sterling to sell his franchise. Uh, from a legal point of view, is that possible? And if so, uh, do you see Magic Johnson as a possible owner? It's an interesting question whether it's possible or not, whether it's legal. There has been a lot of, I've heard a lot of legal experts in the last 24 hours batting this one back and forth. Sterling can't appeal the fine. He can't appeal the lifetime ban as an owner, which would cut him out of participation in the league. But in terms of whether, even if they get the 75% vote from the owners, which I expect they will, whether they can actually force him to sell his team because of something he said. Uh, that's, that is an open legal question, and one thing to know about Donald Sterling at age 81, he is a litigious guy historically, so a lot of people think he'll fight. If he does sell the team in the end and cash in an enormous amount of profit, enormous equity, yeah, Magic Johnson would be a logical guy. He was a minority owner in the Lakers. He's one of the owners of the Los Angeles Dodgers. He has the wherewithal, and obviously putting Magic Johnson's face on this franchise would go a long way towards fixing things in L.A. All right, Stephen, thanks for all your insight on this, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Definitely a volatile situation. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Wilder.